Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn about sampling error. Okay, so in the last video, we learned about sampling. What is sampling? Why do we collect samples? And how to collect samples? Now, going back to the understanding as to why we collect samples, what we're actually interested in is the population. Okay, we're actually interested in the characteristics of the population. But due to the fact that it may be impossible to collect everything in the population, maybe because it's too expensive or too time consuming, that is the reason why we collect samples. Now, logically, since samples is only a part of the population, it is very unlikely that the sample mean that we collect would be exactly equal to the population mean, which is our main intention. Since the sample mean is not equal to the population mean, there exists a sampling error. Okay, so basically what is sampling error? It is the difference between the sample statistic that we collected from our sample with the true value of the population mean that we could have gotten if we could ask the entire population. Okay, so I repeat, the difference between the true population parameter with our sample statistic is the sampling error. Since there is the possibility of having a sampling error whenever we collect samples, how can we make an accurate prediction? Well, to do so, normally we develop this thing called the sampling distribution of the sample mean, which is basically a probability distribution of all possible sample means of a given sample size selected from the same population. Okay, let's do some illustration with some figures, okay? Say this is our population which has the size of 1,000, okay? This big circle here, this is our population. Now, from this population, we are able to collect several samples. Let's say each sample has equal sizes of 20, okay? So here's my sample, the first sample with size 20. So technically, how many samples can I collect from this population if each sample has the same size? Yeah, we can actually collect up to 50 samples, right? The first sample is with size 20. Second sample also has size 20. Third sample, size 20. And up until the 50th sample, also size 20. So if we were to add all of the sample size, we would get 1,000, which is the entire population. Okay? So what is the significance of this? Now... Let's say for each sample, we are able to collect the sample mean, right? So from the first sample, N1, we can get X bar 1. It could be anything. It could be any figure because the X bar 1 depends on the individual values of the 20 uh, sample sizes that we collect. Okay, so it's unknown here. So we don't know what it is. Next, from the second sample, we'll also be able to collect the second X bar 2. From the third sample, we can get the third sample mean, or x bar 3. And of course, for the 50th sample, we can get x bar 50. Okay, so can you see here, we have a list or a distribution of sample means. Now, each of the sample means may have different, different values depending on the individual values collected from each sample. Now, let's say we want to take the average of all of these averages, okay? So you know the average, we just add all of these averages together. And we divide by the size of the samples. How many? 50 in this case. Okay, so I repeat, we're taking the average, we're finding the average of all of these sample means. In other words, it's called finding the average of the averages. So technically, what we'll get is the true value of the population mean, right? Okay, why is this so? Because can you see here, for every samples that we collect, we've got 20. Assuming these 20 are without replacement, meaning they are unique. So it's as if we have conducted a census. Everyone in the entire population is being calculated for, right? So it's as if we add everyone, all the 1,000, uh, people in this population, we take their values, we add them all up, and then we divide it by 1,000. So it's the same thing here, similar. Whatever we get, the sample means, K, 
Okay, if we take the average and then divide by how many samples we have, technically we'll be able to get the same value as if we have conducted a census. Okay, so I repeat again, this is the population mean and this is the, or, okay, we don't really write it this way, we write it as mu subscript x bar or mean of the sampling distribution of sample mean. Okay, so they will technically be equals to one another. So we've looked at the average. How about the dispersion or standard deviation? Now for the population, okay, the standard deviation is sigma. How about the sampling distribution of sample mean here? Would the dispersion be exactly the same, just like the case of mean just now? The answer is no. Okay, so for dispersion, it is always smaller for the sampling distribution of sample mean compared to the dispersion for the entire population. Maybe we can explain this further in the next example. Okay, to summarize, if you are able to collect all possible sample means of the same size from the same population, okay, the mean or the expected value of the sampling distribution of sample mean will be exactly equal to the population mean. Okay, here we call this the mean of the sampling distribution of sample mean will be exactly equal to the population mean. However, the standard deviation or dispersion would not be equals. In fact, the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of sample mean would be smaller than the standard deviation. Okay, this is the standard deviation of the population. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample mean, yeah, it's very long, the name, that is why they have a short name for it called the standard error, okay? So the standard error is basically the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample mean. To get the standard error is basically the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So technically, the standard error or the dispersion for the Sampling distribution of sample means would always be smaller than the standard deviation of the population. Okay, let's take a look at this example. The population is the weight of six watermelons in pounds displayed in a fruit carnival guess the weight game booth. Now you are asked to guess the average weight of the six watermelons by taking a random sample without replacement from the population. Okay, so a table is given here. These are our six watermelons. Now, each of these watermelons have different, different weights, okay? So you're actually asked um, to guess the average weight. Now, let's look at the question. Question A, what is the population mean? So very simple. To get the population mean is just simply to add each and every one of these six watermelons and then divide it with six, see? So this is what I've done. Okay, so we would get 14.07. So you can actually do this yourself. You add them again. 19 plus 14 plus 15 plus 9 plus 10 plus 17 divided by 6. Why 6? Because there are 6 watermelons. Okay, so here the population mean or mu is equals to 14.07. Now, the next question is, what is the sampling distribution of the sample mean for a sample of size 2? Remember, the size of each sample must be the same for us to be able to uh, do this experiment, okay? First things first, we need to decide or determine how many samples can we collect from this population if our required sample size is 2. Okay, there is a shortcut way to know this. We use the combination formula. What you need to do is we take this total population size and then uh, we it's basically in the calculator. We take the population size, then you press C or combination, and then we type in the required sample size. In this case, it's two. So C uh, six, C two. Press your calculator. I believe most calculators you have to press the shift button, meaning you have to press six first, shift C, and then press two. Okay, so you will get fifteen possible samples. Okay, what it means is from this population of six, we'll be able to actually collect 15 possible samples with the same size two.
Okay, let's illustrate. So just now we had, or we have six watermelons, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now our population size is six. Now from our combination formula just now, we know that we can get 15 samples from this population. How is that so? Okay, let's do, um, let's try to list down of the possible samples, okay? Now remember, each sample must have size two. So this is our first sample. Size two means we can get watermelon A and watermelon B. Sample two, watermelon A and watermelon C. Sample three, we can take watermelon A, watermelon D. So can you see the pattern here? A, B, A, C, A, D, and then A, E, A, F. Okay, and then let's go to the next one, B. We can also get B, C, B, D, B, E, B, F. And then C, D, C, E, C, F. D, E, D, F. We can also get E, F. Okay, so how many samples do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Right. Now, after knowing how many samples that we ought to have, in this case 15, okay, so what we need to do now is to calculate the sample mean for each sample, right? So how do we get, or how do we calculate the sample mean? So let's do some calculations. So here is a list of all of the weights in pounds for each sample. Okay, this is watermelon A. It has 19 pounds worth of watermelon. Watermelon B is 14, right? So how do we get the mean now? It's just 19 plus 14 divided by two. Then for the second sample, 19 plus 15 divided by two. For the third sample, 19 plus nine divided by two. Go on and so forth until the very end here. So here, I'll show you. Let's make it a bit bigger. Right, so basically these are all of the sample means collected from each samples. Okay, again, repeat, we have 15 samples of the same size, which is size 2. And here is a list of all of the sample means. Now let's go back to the question. The table that we did just now was basically to answer part B. Okay, so if they ask you to construct or what is the sampling distribution or sample mean for a particular size, that is what you had to do. You have to make a table and list down all of the samples of the same size, okay? So now let's look at question C. What is the mean of the sampling distribution or sample means? Okay, what is the average of all of the averages? Okay, so here we have all of the averages for all of the 15 samples. So the question is, what is the average of the sampling distribution of sample mean? So very simple, what do we need to do? We just add all of this up and divide it by 15. So this is basically what I'm doing here. Okay, so the mean of the sampling distribution of sample mean is simply adding all of this, oh, sorry, let's make a bit of a correction. Yeah, all right, so um, here we add up all of the means collected from the samples, divided by 15, and we'll get 14.07. Now see guys, 14.07 is exactly equal to the population mean that we calculated for part E, right? So this is basically the theory spelled uh, that we learned earlier. The mean of this sampling distribution of sample mean or mu subscript x bar is exactly equals to mu, which is the population mean. Now this is possible if and only if we have managed to get all of the possible sample of the same size from the same population. Okay, so dispersion does not follow the same concept as the average. Average will be equals, okay, but for dispersion, no. For dispersion, the dispersion of the sampling distribution of sample mean, which is um, the standard error, Okay, here, this is standard error. Standard error is always smaller than standard deviation. Why? Because standard error is the standard deviation divided by 
the square root of the sample size. Now let's try to understand this concept using this um, example. Now we've learned there are three methods of dispersion, right? One is standard deviation, and then another one is variance, and of course we also have range. So for this particular example, I'm going to use range simply because it's faster and it's much easier. Now let's look at this population, okay? What is the range? Remember, range is the biggest value minus the smallest value. The range in this question is 19 minus 9, right? Because 19 is the biggest value, 9 is the smallest value. So 19 minus 9 is 10. So the range for the population is 10. Okay, so now let's try to calculate the range for this sampling distribution or sample mean. The biggest value is 18. Yeah, 18. And the smallest value is 9.5. So if you minus it, okay, 18 minus 9.5, we'll get 8.5. So what is the significance of this exercise? See, we can compare. The range for the population is bigger, 10, whereas the range for the sampling distribution of sampling mean is smaller. Okay, so what's the observation that we can get from this um, example? The means are equal. Okay, the population mean would be exactly equal to the mean of the sampling distribution of sample mean. However, the dispersion for the population is always going to be greater than the dispersion for the sampling distribution of sample mean. So you may be wondering why, why is that so? Simply because a sample is only a part of the population. Okay guys, um, from the example that we did previously, it's basically an introduction to the concept of central limit theorem, okay? So, um, I'd like you to spend some time reading from your lecture notes or textbook or the ebooks that I've uploaded in uh, the class website or any of the YouTube videos, YouTube links that I've given you. Okay, so try to understand the concept of central limit theorem. But what I'd like to show is this one. Okay, this part here uh, is basically what we can derive from the previous example. Okay, if we manage to collect all possible samples of the same size from the same population, we can see that the averages would be equal, okay? The mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean would be exactly equal to the population mean here, okay? Right, so even if they're not exactly equal, they'll be very close to each other. However, in terms of dispersion, the sample means would obviously be narrower than the population distribution. Okay, so in other words, the standard error would be always smaller than the standard deviation. Um, so please know the difference between standard error and standard deviation. Standard deviation is dispersion in the population. Standard error is the dispersion within the sampling distribution of sample mean. Okay, I've written a small note here. The bigger the sample size, the smaller the standard error. Okay, how do we get that? It's actually from this formula, see? sigma or standard deviation divided by square root of n so this is mathematical okay the bigger the sample size the bigger the n down there okay something constant which is the standard deviation if the standard deviation divides by a number which is getting bigger and bigger so the standard error will become smaller and smaller 